Hello, everybody. I am doing this a little bit different tonight, so we'll see if this works okay. I'm gonna go find myself on the computer to make sure that this is streaming through my Facebook page. So give me one second. Okay, so it's coming through, pretty cool, okay. So as you come on, say hello. I am going through StreamYard tonight because I have an iPhone on the way, but it's not here yet. So I am going through uh, StreamYard tonight so that the image is flipped the right way for you. So this is the first time I have ever done it this way. Um, hopefully it all goes smoothly. And if not, I do have an iPhone coming for my next live. So um, this way we will now actually be able to see the image as I am seeing it rather than flipped in the mirror image, which has been basically what I've been doing for this whole year. So um, as you come on, say hi, let me know where you're from. I see lots of people coming on. I see Kendra, uh, Kimberly, Lynn. Diana. So we'll give it some time for everybody to find me. Um, I'm a few minutes early anyways, so. But it does look like it's streaming to my Facebook page, which is good. Turn that down a little bit so you can see it. see here. There we go. I see um, Nikki from Seattle. We've got Diana from Northeast Ohio. Carrie from Brownstown, Michigan. Houston, Texas, Nova Scotia. We've got people from all over. That's awesome. I see Debbie has her and her son from Alberta. If you're just, um, hi Kim, if you're just painting on regular paper, then um, it will, if you have a multimedia paper like I have here, this is a multimedia pad here. This one is made for paint. So this is a really good one. I get this one on Amazon. I know some people have said that it is also available on uh, or at Walmart too. So this is just a Canson multimedia paper. This one's an 11 by 14, but you can get different sizes. And that will help your paper not, um, sometimes if you use a little bit too much water, it'll get a little bit of a wave in it, but it does go away and it never folds right in half. It also doesn't leak through to the other pages. So if you're just joining me for the very first time tonight and you've never done one of my paint nights, let me know in the comments. Um, I've been doing this since March now online, um, but about two years in uh, in person. So when COVID hit, I kind of switched over to uh, doing this all online. And it's been going really good. Yes, there's going to be a replay as soon as this is done. So for any of my events, I always post a replay. So you can either find the replay on my page um, right under videos, or you can find it on my YouTube channel, which is also Artistic Chris. 
So if you're not ready, or if for some reason you fall a bit behind, as soon as this tutorial is done, it's going to be reposted back up. So you can go right to the spot where we left off and you can continue at your own pace there. So we're just going to give it a few more minutes, get settled in. There's still people popping on. Welcome to all the first timers. These are always a ton of fun to do. What is everybody drinking tonight? I have my tea in my favorite cup. And just to make sure that is the right, you guys are reading that the right way, right? Be yourself. Yeah, okay. Usually it's flipped backwards. So Richard from Amherstburg, Ontario. I am really close to you. I'm about a 25 minute drive from there. So I see we got some coffee, some cocoa. Some other people drinking tea. So the reindeer here, I just cut around it like this. If you um, don't have graphite paper or a piece of chalk tonight, then you can cut out right around it and then you can just trace the shape of it. Um, if you do have graphite paper though or chalk, you can just leave it um, just, just a little bit around is fine. And then we're gonna be doing the the actual, we're gonna put it on together. So there'll be this will be part of the tutorial. So don't worry about doing this ahead of time. Um, but yeah, just like I said, if, if you don't have anything to cover the background with, then you're gonna wanna cut it out exactly so you can just put it there and then trace around it. Debbie's drinking wine tonight. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so wine and painting always go well together. I've got a lavender candle lit. Everything, everything relaxing tonight. I got my tea, my painting, and my candle. The only thing I'm missing is a little bit of Christmas music, but I will survive without it. It'll all be up here in my head. That is a good question. What's pink tea? I've never heard of pink tea. We got Gatorade, some moonshine. We've got a whole, a whole variety here. That's awesome. I'm jealous. I'm jealous, Shelly. You've got Christmas music on. <laughs> I wish Facebook let us do something like that. Bimmy says 82 degrees in Hawaii. I'm also jealous of that because we have lots of snow right now. I'm in Ontario, Canada, so winters, winters are the, the location I'm in in Ontario. Winters are, uh, they're not as cold as like up north in Ontario, but they're, they get cold and they get, we get a good amount of snow. So it's already started. Sometimes in December, we don't even have snow by Christmas. So I'm not sure if that's just like something we got blessed with early or if it's going to be kind of an, an omen that we're going to have a really snowy winter. So I'm not sure. Usually we have like the 
the farmer's almanac, which kind of tells us, but I'm not sure if they're really ever too correct there. So I still see people coming in. I'm not going to start yet. Just, I want to make sure everybody's finding me. Okay. Um, it's still increasing. So we'll wait a few more minutes, then I'll go over, um, all the supplies that we're using tonight and then we will get started. Yeah, I've been to Niagara Falls a few times. Um, that's about about a four hour drive from where I am. So it's a nice, nice vacation getaway, but it's not too far. It's one of those vacation spots where you don't mind traveling to, and it's always nice there. Yeah, if you're just popping on, there will be a replay immediately after this is done. Thank you to anybody who is answering questions that I'm not seeing. Um, I have a lot of people popping up, but really quickly. So if I miss anything that you really need to know um, or that you want to know, just you can private message me afterwards and I will gladly answer you if I am missing anything here. <clears throat> we still have people popping on. I'll give it about three more minutes. We'll wait till about 10 after six and then we'll get started. Cool. I see with this program down in the corner, there's my words are popping up. That's awesome. I never noticed that before. Well, that's good to know. If somebody's hearing impaired, they can still do this tutorial. That's cool. I know Facebook, I looked into it, but they don't really offer that only for some certain things, but not for Facebook lives. All right, so we're going to go over, I think it's people have stopped trickling in from what I can see. Um, we're going to go over the supply list and then we will start. So um, our three brushes tonight that we're going to be using are our flathead or big flathead here. This one's a three quarter inch. If you only have a half inch, that's fine. That's what I put in um, the description. So um, my daughter, I think she stole mine, so it's gone. <laughs> I'm still looking for it. But three quarter inch or half inch is good. And then we have um, just a small detailed brush. This is a size three. A three or smaller is good for that. And then a small flathead brush. This one doesn't have the size on it. I'm guessing it's around a six or seven. Then we have our napkins here. I have a cup of water just to wash my brushes out, a paper plate for my paints. And then I brought a blow dryer. I'm not going to lift that up there right now, but a blow dryer and then um, stencil here. And I brought a piece of uh, like a cream colored chalk. If you have 
your graphite paper. It might be a little bit harder to see because the background's a black and a blue, but um, if you find it's hard to see, you can just cut it out and trace it in pencil or pen. But I got a piece of chalk here for tonight and then my pen to trace it. And then the paint colors I'm using tonight, I'll show you. These are not carved in stone. Whatever you have is great. Um, I always say be creative and work with what you have. And um, you don't even have to make it the same exact way as mine. Uh, as many paint parties as, as I've done, most people look completely different anyways. So um, we're working with light blue tonight. White. Black, bright blue, navy blue. If you have a black canvas, um, it it's going to be just a little bit of a different process than when it's white. So if you're familiar with painting with acrylics and you feel like you can do the background starting with a black canvas, then go ahead. If you feel like you're a beginner and you need to get the tutorial completely, then I would start with a white background. There's tropical green. Any light green's fine, even if you have dark with yellow and um, dark with yellow and white mixed in will make close to a tropical green. And then we got some red. Pine green, uh, brown, and just a beige color here. Um, doing this in watercolors, it's a different, I'm working with watercolors is a bit of a different process. If you're really familiar with working, working with watercolors and you can, you know, kind of convert the way I teach it with acrylic to just know what layers have to go on top first and stuff, then feel free to go ahead and do watercolor. Um, it really just depends on how experienced you are with watercolor. So I know just from practicing myself with watercolor, it's kind of a different process than when you're doing acrylic. So whatever you are comfortable with. For anybody who can't download the stencil or can't get it for some reason, we're going to be doing that step very last. So if for some reason, just private message me after the tutorial, I will send it to you again through Messenger. And then you can just print it out, go back to the video and just do the very last steps. So that's going to be the last thing we do. All right. So... Um, for any of you who are joining me for the first time, um, my name is Crystal Anger, and I started Artistic Crest about two years ago. And really, um, I just bring everybody together, uh, especially during COVID, which wasn't my initial, I know COVID was going to happen, but I guess my message goes uh, for COVID anyways. But um, just to have a relaxed time, be in the present moment, um, life is busy, especially right now. So we got the Christmas season coming up. Plus, just with COVID, everything seems to have been piled on even bigger. So um, being in the present moment, not worrying about what we're going to have to do tomorrow or what's happened yesterday, and just um, enjoying the process, being proud of our art, um, and just finding that confidence um, in our art. And that's really what we're here for. So I welcome everybody who's new, and then welcome back to everybody who's seen me before um, and painted with me before and we'll get right started. So usually how it goes is I will ask you in between each step if you are ready to move on, um, because I can't see you and you can only see me. Uh, any thumbs ups or likes or anything like that helps me just know how many people are ready to move on. So in between each step, I do give time for everyone to catch up, just respond with a thumbs up when you're ready to go, and I kind of try to stay in the center. We're going to have experienced painters and we're going to have people who are picking up the brush for the first time. So I don't like to rush through these. They're usually two, two and a half hours long. Um, and that is why I always offer the replay. For those of you who do fall behind, if you're brand new, it's there for you to view at a later time um, and to do it even again if you want to practice. So we'll get started. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some likes if you are ready to get started.
All right. Okay, so what we're going to start with here is um, we're going to do all the background first. So we are going to have on our plates just the background colors, and I'm going to go through those right now. So we're going to put some black on our plate. If anybody's not sure what the stencil is, um, I provided a stencil for the deer. If you're um, good to do freehand, you're welcome to. I just provided it for anybody who wanted it. Um, that's the stencil there. If you don't have it and you want it, you can private message me. And after I am done painting, I will send it to you. That's no problem. So we're going to put black on our plates. And we're going to put some white. And some of that light blue or the lightest blue you have. If you don't, you can mix um, whatever blue you have with some white. You can make it a little bit lighter. I'm going to put that bright blue. And then we will put navy blue. So I'll just go over quickly what we have here. So I have my black and my white, um, my bright blue here. I have a navy blue and I have my light blue. You can always make a light blue mixing the bright uh, blue and the white, or you can always take it down a notch mixing a little bit of black in just to get those three different shades of blue if you don't have this. Yes, this is a mixed media pad. So, uh, you can get these off of Amazon. This one's called Canson. It's an 11 by 14. And what we're going to do here is we are going to start with our either a half inch or three quarter inch brush. Yeah, you can definitely add black or white to one if you want to lighten it or darken it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start um, with just the center here of this moon. So we're going to grab a little bit of white here on our brush. You'll see there, it's a decent amount. Um, when we're blending the background, we want everything to be really wet because if we don't have it wet, it's not going to blend well and it's just going to look like the colors are individual. So as we keep going, I'll show you what I mean, but I'm just grabbing some white and we're just going to make the center of our moon right here. So you can see it's a little bit over from halfway um, on the page here. So just come down a couple inches and just a little bit over. And we're, we're gonna make that. And how we're doing that is we're just sticking the brush at a 90 degree angle, just like this. And we're just moving our whole arm in a circle. And when we do that, we're gonna maintain a circle. If we just move our wrist, eventually we're gonna get an oval. So it's gonna be hard to see that paint on the white, but we can kind of see that gloss there. Once we start adding colors, it's gonna be a lot easier. So right now we are just putting a little circle of white. And you can do the circle of white a little bit bigger um, than you want it because we're going to be blending other colors anyway, so it's going to get a bit smaller. So we're gonna go right into that light blue color that we have right here. We're not washing our brush off. We're just going right into it. So now I have some blue mixed in with my white there, as you can see. And I'm just gonna start on the rim of where I did the outside of that white. And I'm just gonna keep going like this, around and around. You can go a little bit more into the middle and then start working your way out. We're just going around and around in a circle. I'm just gonna keep going. Always make your your color a little bit bigger than you want because you're, it's gonna decrease in size when you add that other color. I'm 
Does anybody else hear me talking twice? You might have it on two different, yeah, two different, two different uh, systems. I'm just grabbing a little bit more of that blue. And don't worry if you kind of lose that circle. We can go back with white a little bit after. Right now we're just maintaining that circle on the outside of the light blue. Then once we have that, we can go right into our bright blue. So we're still not washing off the brush here. Uh, no, Sandra, this is not in reverse. I, I am doing this through um, StreamYard so that it's actually the right way. So this is the correct way of how it's showing right now. And so we're gonna take that bright blue on the outside and we're just gonna keep going around like this. And we can go a little bit in a little bit and then take it back out. And just around and around. My brush was dry. You can put it in the water and then wipe it off if you want to start with a damp if you're if you live in an area where you're it dries very quickly. Um, but mine is mine is completely dry. Uh, sometimes I put the tip of it in water if I thought, feel like my paint's drying too fast. So we've just got the white so far, the light blue, and then we went in with the bright blue. And after that, we're going to go right into the black and we can get a good amount of black because that's the rest of our background is going to be pretty much that. So I've got a good amount of black there. And I'm just going to go around and around here. And just kind of paint, keep it in the same motion as the shape of the moon, um, but you don't have to go in a complete circle once you start hitting your edges. You can just go back and forth. Just kind of try to keep your strokes round. So we're just going to get this background done and then I will give everyone a chance to catch up. Just because we need to keep it wet on wet, this is something that has to be done a little bit faster. So I will go over again what is going on if you're just coming on. So far, all we've done is just put our colors on our plates and we're just making our background. So we just started with a little white in the center and worked our way out. And then we went to the light blue and then bright blue and then black. But we're gonna come back in with those colors in a minute. We're just getting our black background set. So I'm still, still maintaining that round shape here. I'm just going back and forth. I'm using both sides of my brush just because the paint is gonna keep pushing through to the other side. This way we get paint evenly distributed. It's not really super thick in one area and then super thin in another. And we can stop it. 
we can leave our ground a couple inches up. So two, two and a half inches up here, we can stop. We can even do like a little line here just to know that we don't have to paint black down there. That's where our skyline is ending. Um, it needs to be wet on wet because you're blending. If you are blending any paints at any time, doesn't matter what surface, um, acrylic paint, it dries super fast. So it needs to be wet on wet. That's why, not because of the notebook, just because of the type of paint it is and because of what we're achieving. So, so when you're done the black part, you can wash your brush out. I'm gonna go back over quickly what we did just so everybody knows. Um, and I'm also going to show you just how to get those circles back in the center there. So as you can see here, this is pretty circular. This looks like ovally. So we're just going to go back in. And this is how we started, too. So just with a little bit of white. And I'm just going to put it in the center here. Just kind of maintain that circle a bit more. And then same with that bright blue around. And then we'll get a little bit of that black that mixes in there and that's okay. Kind of makes it look like it's a little bit darker. I just keep coming in with a little bit of that bright blue. So you'll see here, everything's starting to look a bit more round now. Um, we went through, we did it once. So we did the white, the light blue, the bright blue and the black. And then I just go in, we don't have to do the black again, but I just go in because sometimes you lose that circle and I just kind of give it one more, uh, one more take around just so it remains round. You'll see that's a lot more round than it was. So I'll hold it a little bit closer so you can see here. And you'll see how when you keep going around, it gets blended in. So I'm gonna let that dry for a couple minutes. I um I do have a blow dryer here if we need to, if you need to blow dry yours as soon as you're done, you can go ahead and do that. We're gonna put in these swirls here after. So um, it's better if this is dry to do those swirls. I'm just gonna go clean out my water a bit because black kind of took it over here. So take your time um, with the background and I will be right back. Yes, rinse out your brush after you use the black or it will take over the other colors.
Also, if you need to go uh, clean out your water, you can do that. Just if we do any light colors and you clean your brush in black water, it's going to kind of take over. It's going to kind of make it look murky. Um, if you took the black to the bottom, that's okay. Just make sure it's completely dry before we do this blue um, down here or it will mix in and it will all look dark. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to give this a quick blow dry. So if you have a blow dryer, you can do that. Um, if maybe refresh your computer screen, um, Barbara, and that might help. If you refresh your screen and then go back on through your computer, it might not be frozen. There's going to be a replay right after. There's no way to rewind. I don't believe there's a way to rewind the live stream, but there will be a replay right after. So I'm just going to give everyone a couple minutes just to catch up on the background. Um, and then we will continue on. I know some of you are painting with multiple people in your house. So if you only have one blow dryer, it might take you a few extra minutes. Does anybody have any plans this weekend? Tomorrow I am going to paint a whole bunch of tutorials up for January. Um, work on some orders. And then also Sunday we have another, me and my daughter have a parent and me paint day. So I'll explain that a little bit later. If anyone wants to join with their kids or their grandkids, that's also a free event. So just let me know in the comments as you finish up that you're ready to move on. Um, we have about 760 people watching, so um, the more thumbs up I see, the more I'll move on, just because I want to make sure a good amount of you is ready to go. Yes, the replay is a video that you can watch at any time. It's not, I'm not literally going back on and redoing the live. I just save it in my videos on my page and you can watch it any time. And I leave my videos up for a really long time. Also, I have a YouTube channel under Artistic Chris. All my free ones go in there, um, which is very super easy just to see all of them if you want to do it that way.
All right, so I see a lot of thumbs up, so we'll get started. Um, I do wood orders, so I do wood signs too for lo anyone local to me. So that's what I'll be doing this weekend. But okay, so what we can do is we're just gonna take um, this, still this big flat brush here. And I'm gonna move a little bit of white to the side, just a little bit here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that light blue in with it. So we're just kind of making an offset, just a very faint blue. So we'll see you there. It's just really, really light. And I'm gonna take, and your water um, that you cleaned, you can go into that with your brush and I just want to water this down here. So I'm just going to put some water into it from my cup. Just kind of water that down. And just kind of keep whatever's on my brush there. And this is what we're going to do. So we want to create like a murky kind of like foggy look here, right? Not really murky, I guess this is Christmas, but just kind of that foggy sense around this kind of reflecting, the moon kind of reflecting um, through the fog and the snow. So we have this watered down brush that I mixed with white and the light blue, and I'm going to stick it back in the water. So I'm just sticking it in and I'm just going to lightly brush the edges off here just so it's not gonna drip. So we're gonna have a very kind of like dirty looking brush there, but the, the paint is not gonna be solid. We're gonna be able to see the bristles through it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna maintain that circular motion like this. And we're gonna go back and forth here. So if you find, I find it's a little, still a little bit too bright. You go, you can go back in your waters, kind of swirl it around and give it another quick wipe off there and just kind of keep going back. Now we want the majority of these thicker swipes to be in here because when we put this light post in, if it's black on black, we're going to have a hard time seeing it. So this is kind of giving us a lighter background for that um, lamp post to pop out. And we're just going to follow the moon and just kind of go like this. So the key to this is a very thin paint and just kind of go light handed. And if you find like it's not enough, you can even just kind of tap your brush back into that really watered down part here. And then you can go back in the water, just kind of wipe it off and then just kind of go again, just so it's a little bit more sticking out a little bit more. So we don't want to see solid paint. We want to be able to see that black through. Now I'm just keeping in that circular. We're still following the shape of that moon. Just like that. Yeah, so you can do this really to, you should have such a little amount on your brush that it kind of just gets you dry as you're doing this. So mine's already dry. To get a little bit of a thicker area like that, you can just wet your brush a bit, just kind of go over it, and it'll take that away a bit. We're gonna we're going right down to that line that we made here. Um, if you went all the way down, just go to about um a couple inches from the bottom. And then you can wash your brush out completely when you're done that.
So what we did was I just mixed that light blue and white um, a little bit just to make it a light, light blue. We added some water to it and we put our brush in it. And then we just want it to be kind of like a dirty water. So um, I just put my brush in, just wipe it off like this. So the brush is fairly wet. It's just enough so it's not going to drip down the canvas. Just until we see that we have a little bit of that left. And then that's when we go around. Just like that. Yes, if you put too much white, um, you can definitely just give it a quick blow dry and you can kind of just swirl a little bit of that black back in there and that will definitely lessen it. Okay, so I just see a couple comments just saying they they need a little bit more time. So we'll just give them a couple minutes here and then we'll move on. You're welcome, Cindy. Don't feel rushed. Um, just let me know in the comments when you're good to go. Um, anybody have any pets painting with them tonight? <laughs> I always have my beagle with me. For those of you who have been here with me more than more than tonight, you know that usually he makes some weird noises while I'm painting. Tonight he was choking on, uh, he gets his stuff is stuck in his nasal passage all the time and he makes the, the weirdest noise. And I'm like, you can't be doing that during my whole life. So please, please get that out of your nose. <laughs> Thank you to everybody putting thumbs up. It's, that's awesome. We'll just give a couple people just a couple more minutes. If you're waiting around, just uh, enjoy the moment. This week has been super, super busy. So I'm enjoying just taking a good couple deep breaths and enjoying my tea. <laughs> Christy says she has three cats and two dogs in the room she's painting in. <laughs> You're going to have, you might have uh, some paw prints on your painting. <laughs> oh, Amy, you have a beagle too. I love beagles. They're so sweet. Kimberly has Skittles, the Jack Russ hole. Max, that's, that's a cute name. All right, so I'm seeing quite a few thumbs up. Um, just wait about 30 more seconds and I'll, okay, Cindy's ready to go too. And awesome. So I think we're all good here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on this lower part here. So right here, just this the land kind of to, to differentiate between where the background is and where the land starts. So um, 
we are going to go right into our navy blue. Um, we should already have it on our plates here. And we are still using the big brush. And we're just gonna go straight across, just back and forth with that navy blue. Now I have a pretty thin navy blue. Um, I have different brands of acrylic here. Some are really good, some are a little bit cheaper. So I'm probably gonna do a couple coats of this. If yours is good and it's not too thin, then one coat's probably enough. Um, especially since we're gonna be going over um, a couple times with different shades and stuff. So we're just gonna go back and forth. Now I'd like to take like big long strides. You'll see here, I'll show you an example. If I just kind of go one way um, or I take two small strides like this, you're gonna start to see kind of like um, where the brush ends and kind of where it starts again. I don't know if you can see that with it wet, but when you take both sides of your brush and you go all the way, you're not gonna have those lines there which is kind of what we're going for. We want it to look, the first coat just to look smooth. The first coat of acrylic is never the final coat. So acrylics need thin, thin and many coats. So I'm just gonna take quickly and blow dry mine just because I wanna do a second coat here. Like I said, if yours is thick enough, don't worry about it, mine's just um, a cheaper brand for this color. And I'm just going in with my second coat here. It's way better coverage with that second coat. So while that's wet down there, I'm just gonna take the very corner of this brush. It's still dirty um, with that blue and that's okay. I'm gonna take and just put it in the black, just a very tiny bit. We don't want too much because the black will take over. And we're just going to just kind of, just kind of blend that in a bit, just going back and forth. But like I said, very tiny amount or it will take over. So that whole, that one little corner should do the whole thing. I just want to get it a tiny bit darker in there. So you'll see kind of, there's just a little bit of a dark tone here and there. You know, it's hard to see with the light shining on the wet paper, but. And then we can wash out that brush. Thank you to everybody who is responding and helping me out. I appreciate it a ton. That's very nice of you.
Okay. So we're just gonna let this dry a little bit. We don't want it 100% dry, just not too soaked here because we still wanna blend in, we wanna blend in this area down here. So we're just gonna let it just not be completely wet. Just the old hand dry. <laughs> Uh, there's not a link to watch later, Sue. It's going to be right on my page, Artisticris. Uh, under videos, you'll see it. So if you just go to my page, you're on my page right now commenting on this. So just stay on this page. If you go on the main stream, um, stream of it, you'll see videos and then it'll be available to watch there. So I'm just going to take, we're going to work on that, this little reflection down here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white just to the side again. I'm going to put a little bit of this light blue in there and mix it. And a little bit of the bright blue and just mix it in there. So it's going to be kind of like that color there. A little bit of white a little bit of that light blue and a little bit of bright blue. We're just mixing it in together. So it's gonna make that color. Kind of like almost like a gray blue, a robin's egg blue. And we're still gonna use this big brush and we're just gonna come and make a little circle. So we're gonna stay underneath our moon, kind of just go straight down. And we're just gonna take, the circle's not gonna go past um, this line where the two um, colors divide. It's gonna be kind of almost like a line, like this. And then it's gonna come out into like, almost like an oval actually, I should say, not a circle, sorry. So we're just creating a little, a little oval here. This side's gonna be rounded. This one's gonna be a little bit more flat. Because we're, we want the moon to reflect off the ground. If we put the, the oval all the way into the sky, then it's not gonna look like it's reflecting off the ground. It's just gonna look like another circle. So we're just doing that there. And then we're just gonna, if there's any excess paint on your brush, just wipe it on your napkin. You don't have to clean it. Um, I'll go over those colors one more time here. So that was just white mixed with the light blue and the bright blue. So those three colors together um, made that center color. And that's just what I put here. Um, I didn't make it as bright because the reflection is not gonna be as bright as the actual moon. Um, and then we're just gonna go right into the bright blue and just kind of go a little bit around that a little bigger but always maintaining that flat side so we are not going past um not going past where the deer is going to be standing into the sky can even bring it out a bit more here. And then if we want to blend the edges in here, we just can go back into that navy blue that we used and just kind of go back around here. We can kind of just even flick out a bit to the sides here. And just kind of go around that edge where the colors meet and just kind of blend them. We 
and you can work with this a bit. If you feel like your center color should come out a bit more, you can add a bit more here. I feel like mine should come out a bit. So the center, the center part was just that mixture with the white, the light blue, and the bright blue. And then I just went right to just bright blue. And that's what's lighter around. And I'm just pushing super light for this because if it's wet on wet and you go too hard, you're going to take the under layer of that paint off. So just super light. You'll see there, it's just like almost like a half a, like a rainbow upside down, a half a moon. So we'll give that a quick blow dry when we're done. Okay, so just give me some thumbs up when you're ready to move on. Okay, I see lots of thumbs up, lots of likes, so I think we're ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so what we're going to be using next is this uh, small flathead brush. And we're going to be doing that lantern here, this light. So we should already have the black on our plates, um, but if you don't, you can put some on there.
So we're going to work on this lamp one shape at a time. So I'll try to paint it up close for you so that um, you can see exactly how it's done. But we're just going to be working on the base, basic shapes of this light. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right into the center of this highlight we made. That's why it's important that you dry. So if you have to take a second and dry it, just, just give it a quick blow dry. It probably dries super fast. And we're going to go in with some black here. I like to put my brush in and then just kind of pat it off on the side. We don't want it to be crazy full like it was when we did the blending. And we're just going to create our first shape here. So I'm just going to take just a little bit down from um, where the line starts. And we're just going to draw um, like almost like a little square rectangle thing. So not not too rectangleish, not too squarish, kind of somewhere in the middle. And we're just going to color that in. So we're just starting with a little box here. I'm going to bring it a little bit up past that line where the ground meets the sky, just a little bit. Then I'm going to load my brush up again, just kind of tap it off. And we're just going to angle the sides. So we just want to bring the sides in um, just so that that determines um, the thickness of the pool at the bottom. So I'm just going to put a little angle here and a little angle here. So just like that. You can even fill that into there if you want. And now we're just going to bring our pole up into the center of our moon. Um, the pole is not going to go as high as the moon. So it's going to start just below where that circle is. Because we want our main lantern, we want that light to shine through the main part of our lantern at the top. So when we bring our pole up, just bring it to the very bottom of where that white starts. And I'm just going to use the complete thickness of this brush to brush it on. So it's going to be at a 45 degree angle on the thick way. It's not going to be the skinny way like this. And I'm just going to follow coming up here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit skinnier as I go. So um, what you can always do is just take the thickness of the brush all the way up first. So just go all the way up. Just like that. And then you can go afterwards and kind of fill in your sides a bit here so that it's thicker to thinner at the top. That just gives us a base to start with. And we're just going to come up. And I'm going to hold this closer for you to see in one second. So I basically have that right now. Uh, maybe if you go go right out, Barbara, like go right out of Facebook and go back in and then try that if it won't refresh. I'm not sure why it won't refresh, but 
Usually if you can refresh it or go out and come back in, that will solve the problem. Okay, so the next shape we're going to do is we're just going to put a little line underneath here, just like that. So just like that. And then it's going to come out a little bit. So you can even just angle your brush a little bit on each side. Like that. And then just connect it at the top. And we can fill that in. So it's going to look like that. So whenever I paint, I like to break down how I see things rather than seeing them as whole, because when we see them as whole, sometimes it, they can be a little overwhelming. So we'll just break it down into shapes. I'm going to straighten this a bit. Okay, and then we are going to bring out another line on top here. So just a little bit longer, just like that. And we're going to make a really skinny, long rectangle. Just all the way across. And then we can fill that in. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to be using the same brush, but we're just going to be using it the skinny way. So um, you'll see here a flathead brush you can use for a few different different things. So um, we were using it more the thick way. Now we're going to turn and we're just going to use that little strip there. And what we're going to be working on is these individual pieces down here or up here. So all these little pieces. So we are going to come, so we're, we're going to stay in a bit from the sides. We're basically going to um, start where these points meet um, right here. So you'll see these corners right here, how they meet. So we're just going to bring it right up, and that's where we're going to start. So these little lips are going to stay out here. Um, and we're going to just go straight up a little bit using the skinny way. So just like that. We can do that on both sides. So we just have that there. And then we're gonna bring this out a little bit. So like that and like that. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing inside a little bit. So just bring it in a little bit and go up and out. And out. So we'll have two of them like that. This book is heavy when you're holding it with one hand. <laughs> I'm getting sore muscles over here. It's a workout.
<laughs> when your book is too heavy to hold, you need, you know you need to go back to the gym. <laughs> so I'll give everybody a minute just to catch up on that part right there, what we've done so far. And since this is a freehand painting, they're never going to be exactly the same. So even my painting down here that I did myself, this one I can already see my lamp is a little bit wider, but it's freehand. So it's hard to do unless you're taking exact measurements. So don't be too hard on yourself if it's looking a little bit different. So I'll bring it close up again for you here. And that's what we've got so far. Okay, so we're basically going to do what we just did down here, but just up here backwards. So we're going to draw um, or paint, sorry, a line straight across. We're going to be making a, another long, skinny rectangle. So I'm just going to put my line here. And if you need to stretch these little skinny parts up a little bit more that's fine and we're just going to color that in so we just have a top there i'm going to bring the sides out again just a tiny bit more than those posts go Thank you, Brenda, for sprinkling the love. Yes, we always say sprinkle the love. If you want to have anyone else see this video or if you're enjoying this, sprinkle the love. Okay. So then we're going to just take off from there and we're just going to go up on an angle here. So just up a little bit and we can go straight across again and we're just going to color that in. This thing is op opposite to me so I'm trying to figure out where, where you're actually seeing this. <laughs> I'm just going to take the very corner of my brush here and I'm just going to put a little tiny thing on top, just like a little round, half a round little ball on top there. So you'll see up there.
And when you're done that, you can wash out your brush. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I see all the sprinkles. Okay, so just throw me a thumbs up when you're ready to move on. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to work on um, just putting in the green, what do you call that, like the garland, the green garland, and we'll work on the bow right now. I want to save the deer for last only because I know some um, don't have their stencil yet, so when they do redo it, they don't have to be searching for it, it'll just be at the end of the video. So we're gonna be putting on this green garland and doing the red bow. So we're gonna get out our pine green and put a little on our plate. And we're gonna get our tropical green or whatever lighter green you have is fine. And we're going to be using our little detail brush there. So we're just going to put some paint on there. It's a good amount, but it's not dripping or anything like that. And we're just going to be going on an angle kind of almost putting just like a line through. So um, we'll start at the top here and we'll just basically paint a line just like that. I know it's hard to see because it's dark on dark right now, but it's just gonna be a little line there. And then we're just gonna take and just kind of wrap it around. So kind of make that edge touch on this side and then make the edge touch on this side here. Kind of like it's just wrapping around. And then we're gonna leave quite a space here for our bow. So I'd say about a, an inch and a half of a space and then we can do that again. So we're just going to go on the same angle. Just do a line. And what I like to do is I always, this is like one of my main points is always have your hand down on the surface. Um, if your arm's up in the air, you're going to shake and you're not going to have that much control. 
you want to have your hand down on the surface and really all that's moving are your fingers so your fingers are in control here and the whole weight of your hand is just on your surface that way you don't have um the shakes right because as soon as all that weight is in the air you're going to get shaky and that's really how i make the straighter lines either my the side of my hands on there or my baby fingers on there something's always on my surface when i'm painting so right now we're just using that dark hunter green or that pine green and we're just making these little little lines through and just kind of wrapping it in behind there So I will hold this closer when I'm finished here. And you can start with these green ones being a little bit thicker because we are going to be putting the light green on top. So we want to be able to see the layers of the green. So once you draw that line, you can make it a little bit wider or paint that line on there. So you'll see there. So you'll see it's just basically touching. I did a line right here and I just kind of did a little like half circle up just to touch that pool on both sides, just so it looks like it's wrapping around. I don't know if that's close enough to see there. So no, we're not, no, we're just, we're just making it wider. So we just did a line just like that. And then we just made it a little bit wider. That's all. So when we're done that, we can wash our brush off. So I just have one at the top here. There's a space here, about an inch and a half. That's where we're gonna put our bow. And then I just did three more. If your pole's a little bit shorter or longer, you can always add as many or as little as you need just to fill that space. My tea is cold now. Now I'm drinking, I guess, iced tea. <laughs> Okay, so when we're done that, we're going to go into our lighter green. So whatever lighter green color you have. And I'm still using my detailed brush here. 
And I'm just going to start dabbing just on the top. So you're going to start to see it kind of pop. Just dab up and down. Just kind of up and down like this. Just to give it some dimension there. So we want to be able to see the dark green underneath. Um, but we're just putting that light green, just dabbing it kind of just to give it some dimension. No, you don't have to dry it. It's okay. Just kind of dab it in there. You're going to see some of that dark green through. It's going to kind of make it look like it's like kind of like a pine tree wreath <laughs> kind of garland thing going on. Oh no, Kathy, did you dunk your paint in your drink? <laughs> your paintbrush in your drink? It happens at least once every time we do a paint night. <laughs> just don't drink it afterwards. So then we're going to continue to do that with these ones down here too. So just little dabs with your pointed brush. You can kind of see how it starts to pop out a bit. I'm gonna try to get it close up so you can see. You can still see the green, the dark green underneath. That's just kind of making it look fluffy up top. Um, yes, Nikki. Um, this of usually my events are posted three to four weeks in advance. And right in the details, there'll be the complete supply list. So there'll be a supply list there. If there is a tracer like we have tonight or a stencil like this, um, then that usually I will throw down in, in a comment underneath the event. So everything is always up for three to four weeks before we paint. So if there's any issues or anything, you always have lots of time to uh, get everything you need. Here. Yeah, if you have a light hunter, or if you have a hunter green and you add white to it, um, it's just going to make it look a little more pastel, but that's fine. If you do happen to have some yellow and you throw that in, then it's going to be a little bit more bright like this one. Thank you, Brittany, son. I appreciate the compliment. That's really kind of you. So while everyone's catching up on that, I'll just show you what we're doing on Sunday. So this is another free event. This is a parent and me paint event. Um, how are we going here? So this one will be at 12 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, and me and my four-year-old daughter will be painting this together. So usually, if you're not familiar with my page, usually on um, maybe a couple Sundays a month, we do a parent and me paint day. Um, grandparents, um, aunts and uncles are all welcome as well. And um, this is, they are always free events. So um, I just like to throw that out there for people to have something to do with their kids. And also, especially during a time like this, I know my kids, I have an eight year old and a four year old. And especially my eight year old, he's really been feeling COVID this year because I kept him home to homeschool him. So he's, um, 
he's been a little bit more <laughs> upset, but um, just if your kids are having a struggle or whatever, this kind of brightens their day. So that will be Sunday on my page, just like this at 12 PM with my four-year-old daughter, Lily. My son doesn't really care for painting too much, but I'm sure he'll pop in once in a while to say hi. <laughs> Yeah, there's always a, every single event I do, um, I do a replay. So whether it's free or it's paid, there's a replay. Um, my free ones, the replays are always on my page or on YouTube uh, under Artistic Chris. So you can find my free ones there and my paid ones. Um, if you purchase it, you get lifetime access. So they're usually $10 per household. So you can invite as many people over as you'd like or as many times as you'd like to paint the same painting. Um, and it's just $10 for that whole household. So if you have 10 guests, then you can split a dollar a piece and always have access to that. So everything has a replay. Okay, so if everyone's ready to move on to the bow, just let me know in the comments and we can start that. Okay, I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick with our small detail brush. And we're going to go into the white. Um, always when we paint red, if you're doing your bow a different color, that it wouldn't be as necessary. But when we're doing red on black, you won't be able to see it very well. It doesn't... Um, doesn't really give good coverage. So we're going to go in with white first. And I just got some paint there, just a regular amount. And we're going to just do the shape of the bow. I'm just going to back this up a bit so I can bring it closer. So what we can do is to the right side of the this pole here, um, kind of in the center of this and this, we can just draw a little circle. So. This, or a little oval, I should say. I keep saying circle, but I guess I need to learn my shapes. So we're just starting with that little oval there. And it's more to the right side. So you can still see part of the pole behind that left side of that oval there. And you can go ahead and fill it right in. And then on this side here, where the pole's sticking out more, we're going to come up and back down and around. So kind of like the shape of a bow, just like that. And we're going to fill that right in, too. We just need one light coat of white for that red to pop. So that's what we have so far. And you can always change the shape as you go. If you, for example, it's always better to start smaller and then you can expand. So for example, like let's say I wanted this top part to come out a bit more. Because I already did that, it's no big deal. I could just come up here. I could give it a little bit more of an angle. Fill that in and then come back down. So you start smaller and you realize you like don't like the shape as much and you want to change something about it, you can always do that.
And then on the other side, I'm going to do more of almost like a triangular shape. So this one was more rounded. I'm going to come up here like this. And then just come straight down. And then kind of do a rounded edge here. So you'll see there it's a little bit more of a triangle. And we're going to fill that in too. So that's what we have so far. And we're gonna accentuate the shapes when we do the red and the black. So don't worry about right now kind of just blending in. That's completely normal. And then we're gonna bring our two little ribbons down. So one's gonna come out this way here. We can color that in. And I'm just gonna bring one out the other way. Just like that. So I'll give you a couple minutes there and we're just going to let that dry. We can't put the red on until it's dry. So while we're waiting for it to dry, we're going to do a little bit more accents on this lamp. Um, we're going to put a little bit of snow down here and then we can um, start our red coat. But I'll give everyone a, a minute or two just to get that their shape on there. And you can wash your brush out just sometimes what will happen is our paint will kind of creep up on our bristles and we'll get like a thicker chunk down here and then no paint up here. So it's good once in a while just to clean our clean our brush, start fresh. And then I always kind of just move the brush up the way it naturally is supposed to be. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to add a little bit of accents to this lamp. So we're going to still stick with this brush here. And we're just going to put a very light amount on the tip of our brush. So it's just going to be the very tip, not too much there. And we're going to come in here and just kind of accentuate um, what, like this, the shape of this lamp post here. So I'm just going to lightly, very light handedly, not too much paint on your brush, just kind of go on that angle there with the white and then kind of just go down and then same here on an angle and then down just like that thank you debbie <laughs> i'm glad you're enjoying it 
And then we're going to naturally stick to one side. So the side where the light is coming from more. You can pick it because technically the middle, this lamp is in the middle of the light. So really it's not favoring one side over another. But let's just say I'm going to pick the right side. Say there's like another light here maybe. And it's coming from here. But you choose whatever you feel um, is better. And I'm just going to go and just lightly do down the one side with this white here all the way up so you'll see there just kind of giving that light on one side I see we have a 10 year old painting with us tonight are you having fun And then I'm just gonna come across the bottom here with some light. So just a straight line across there and see how it's kind of hitting and missing. You don't have to have a solid line. And then same with at the top here, just a little line there, just to give it some dimension. How many kids do I have painting here with me tonight? I see we have a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old. That's awesome, guys. Um, Lori, as soon as this video is done, you can re the replay will be up so you can watch it from the start. Okay, so once we're done that, we're just going to work on the snow at the bottom here. So I'm still sticking with the same brush. I'm just going to go in the white here. And I'm just going to dot around. So just little dots just around the base. Like the snow is gathering. Because we don't have our snow in yet, but it's going to be snowing outside. So I'm just going to put some snow around there. And you can kind of come up around the sides a bit just to kind of make it look like it's piling in behind. And I'm just tapping up and down, just gently. So just like that, just tapping gently. So we have another, I see a 12 year old, 12, 15 and 16, five, eight and 12. That's awesome. 10 and seven. Oh, another, a nine year old just popped up. I always encourage kids to paint. So all my events are kid friendly. I will never be swearing or <laughs> saying inappropriate things. Uh, so your children are always welcome to join in. Okay, so when we're done all those white parts, we're going to wash our brush. Julian says 52. Hey, kid at heart, man. <laughs> I'm close to 40, and I still love acting like a kid, so... <laughs> These guys make me laugh. <laughs> I had one lady message me the other day. She's 70, I believe she said 78, and she just picked up a paintbrush for the first time to paint with me. And I was like, you know what? That is awesome. That made my whole day. All right. So what we did was, so far, we just highlighted um, down here, up the side, put a little bit across, and then we just added some snow. So what we're going to do next is we're going to color this bow in red. If it's still wet, just give it a quick blow dry. Um, mine's pretty dry now, but just blow dry that area. And we're going to just paint over it with red. So you can take your red and you can put that on your plate. 
We have all ages tonight. That's awesome. Yeah, paintings for everybody. There's no age limit. Okay, so I got my red here, and I'm just going to go over the white that I did on that bow with my detailed brush, and I'm just going to paint over what I painted already, and you're going to see that red really pop. It's really important to put the white down if you have a dark background before you do red. Really, you could do that before you do any color, but red especially. If my daughter was painting this, she would be doing a pink bow. Everything she does is pink. <laughs> I always say, what color are you going to use, Lily? And she says, I think I'll use pink this time. Like, she doesn't use it every single time. <laughs> I am completely shocked <laughs> that you chose pink. If you guys tune in for the range you're painting on Sunday, I can guarantee some part of her painting will have pink in it. Well, that's awesome, Angel. There is nothing wrong with going through to be an artist and painting, and there's so many benefits to painting. Just being creative in general. Okay. When you're done now, you can wash your brush. I'll just bring it closer so you can see there. So once we add the black in there, it's gonna pop really nice. But we'll let that dry. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our deer. So I will um I will wait for you to give me a thumbs up just because this next step, um, I want everyone to be able to hear what to do um, just before we move on. So just give me the thumbs up if you're ready to put your deer on. If you don't have your deer stencil and you have messaged me to send it to you, um, just, um, I guess, just wait until we are done the deer. And then there's only really, after the deer, there's only really the snow to put on. So even if you just wanted to put your snow on, you could do that. Um, and then just come back for the replay. It'll probably be done around 8.30 and it'll be replayed. Okay. So I see lots of thumbs up here. So what we have here is our deer. Um, if you don't have uh, carbon paper or a piece of chalk, then just cut it out all around and you can just put it up here and you can just trace around it with a pencil um, all the way around like that. If you do have chalk or carbon paper, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chalk that I have here and I'm just going to color the back of it. This is going to turn my paper into carbon paper. So um, because it's black on black, carbon paper might not show up as well. So we're just going to color the back of this. So I'm going to do that right now. And you're just going to just run the chalk all along the back of the paper. I'll show you after I'm done. And if ever you don't have carbon paper, you can do this with any color chalk. So say you had a white background, you can use any color chalk and it will show up. So you can just wipe, kind of just shake off the excess, but the back now is all kind of a beige. I know it's hard to see. Okay. 
Uh, so we're just going to tape and I'm only taping mine down because mine is standing straight up. If you're on a table, you don't have to do this. You can just hold it down. But I'm just going to do this because my paper is going to fall if I don't. So we're just going to put our deer where we want them. And then we can take and trace around the deer. So wherever we trace that chalk is going to be left. We can go ahead and do that. So when we lift that off, you will see we have just where the chalk is left. Now, any excess chalk that you see on here, you can just take a damp cloth and wipe it after it dries. But that's what we are left with. If you're on a larger canvas, then I would enlarge the deer. Um, I guess it would, I could just make it look like it's further away right now. It's just looking like it's a bit closer up than the lamp. It might look like it's actually behind the lamp if it's too small. Um, yeah, if you cut it out, you can, well, with, with whatever you can see. So if you have um, just a pencil, because you'll be able to see the shine of the pencil. So yeah, any excess chalk you have, if you're using chalk, don't worry, that will wipe right off after we're done painting. Okay, so all I did was I just colored the back of the page with the chalk. So you can still see the picture there. So I just colored the back completely with chalk and then I just taped it on. And then I just traced it with the pen. And when I took it off, just where, it, where I traced is left there. And this would work with anything. If you have wording, if you wanted to print out words and put them in the sky or whatever, or just for a completely different painting, you could do that too. Yes, Jen, you can also get white graphite paper too if you have a dark background. Yeah, so anybody who doesn't have a deer, just private message my Facebook page. Private message me. I will, after this video, I will go through everybody's and I will send you the deer if you want it, okay? Um, I'm not going to remember. There's like a million comments. I think we're at 860 comments. So I could miss you. So please just message me on my page and I will gladly send it right through there for you. Okay, so when we're done tracing it, we're just going to take and we're going to color it in with this warm beige here. So you can take warm beige and put it on your plate. And I'm going to use my small flathead to color it in. If you get close to like tight areas like the antlers, you can switch to the the detail brush and just kind of finish that. But just to give it a faster coat, I'm just going to do it with this one to start. You can get graphite paper. I get mine on Amazon because I get it in bulk, but I think you can get it at a local, any local craft store. We're just right now, we're just doing a solid coat of that light beige.
Yeah. Just make sure you put a thin layer. It doesn't have to be caped on. Just a thin layer. We just really want to cover that, the dark behind. You can still see the dark through a little bit. That's okay. So I'm just using my small flathead brush right now. I'm just filling in the bigger parts and then I'll go back with my uh, detailed brush just to get in to the skinnier parts like his antlers and stuff. And I'm just using that warm beige color right now. So any cream color you have, if you only have white, white's fine too. You can use white. Yeah, so we have warm beige brown. We're going to mix a little bit. We're going to make a little bit of a darker brown and then white will be on this deer here. So right now we're just coloring our deer that warm beige. We'll give everyone a minute to catch up on that. Um, and I'll just show you guys next Friday. I also have an event coming up. So I'll talk a little bit about that and then we will get right on with finishing this guy up. So I have this painting event coming up next um, Friday, I believe it is. So this one is um, $10 to join. This one you get lifetime access with. So this is where you can uh, do $10 per household um, and also paint it any time you want. There's also a replay on this if you can't make it that night. Um, so this one is called Old, Old Holy Night uh, Paint Night. What I'll do is I will leave the link in the just in the comments if anybody wants to check it out it will be there um but yeah that is next friday so i'll go ahead and i'll, I'll pin that comment there so you guys can see it if you want to check it out
Oops. Okay. So I pinned that there. You'll see it says Artisticris beside the link. So that one is safe to click. Um, we haven't actually had any scammers or hackers in here tonight. So it's been a good night. Usually they, I usually get a few links in there, but I think my link's the only one. So just give me some thumbs up if you're ready to move on and you have your deer uh, painted in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put some black around our um, red bow and then we'll finish off the deer and we'll be done. So we're going to get out this small brush again. And we are going to go and we're just going to basically outline it. Now we don't want to outline it right to the edge because it's already black. So we're just going to kind of bring it a little bit in. Just a little bit in and just kind of give it so you'll see there. It's not all the way to the edge. It's just kind of in a bit, the outline. And then same with down here. We will kind of just stay a bit in that line. like that. And we can wash off our brush there. Yep. So for anyone who's just popping on, there is going to be a replay under videos on my page. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to get our colors ready. So the deer is a combination of a brown here. So we're going to put the brown on our plate. And then we should already have white on our plate, so that's good. Um, and then we're going to take just another section with the same brown. So really what I'm doing is I'm just, I just put a spot of brown here, and I'm just going to put another spot here of the same color. And I'm going to just um, put a little bit of black here and just mix it in with that brown. We just want to make more of a dark chocolate brown. I'll double check the link if it's not working. I don't know why it wouldn't be working. That's kind of weird. If that link doesn't work for some reason, if you go under events on my page, you'll see it there. But I'll double check that link. Okay, so we have just like a dark chocolate brown and then that original brown color. 
Um, and then we have still our beige and our white. So that's what we're going to be working with. I'm just going to check that link super quick. Okay, so if you have, um, I think what it is, is if you have any, um, like, protection on your computer, like, a good amount of protection, for some reason, I work with Constant Contact, like, that's who I, my provider is for sending out these events, and for some reason, it always says that their website is not secure, although it is, so if you have a lot of, like, firewall protection, that might be why the link isn't coming up. But if you want to attend the event, for some reason, the, the link isn't working, you can just message me and we can work it out a different way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start here um, with the antlers. And I have that dark chocolate brown on my brush. So right now, I'm just, where are we? I'm just uh, put that darkest chocolate brown that I mixed with the black on my brush. And I'm just going to come in with the antlers and just throw in a bit of dark chocolate brown. You still want to be able to see that beige around it. So you're almost going more in the middle. You're just kind of bringing that in. So that's what we're going to have so far. So we're just going in with the darkest brown, just on those antlers. We can still leave a little bit of beige just kind of showing through to show that they're there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick with that dark, that darkest brown. And we're just going to do little, little flicks. So the darkest color is going to be where the body parts meet. Um, and then more on the outside of the deer. So for example, if I just follow, we'll, we'll leave his ear and his face for now. And we're just going to skip the neck. And I'm just going to do little tiny flicks. So just with the tip of my brush, I'm just leaving little tiny spots. And you'll see as I go along, that's all that's there so far. So I'm based, I'm hardly touching it. I'm just kind of doing little flicks all along his back and down his neck. And we're just going to go on to the very top of his tail there. Then we're going to set boundaries for where his legs separate. So we're going to come down his backside here and just leaving those little flicks still. And this is all done with the darkest brown. Yeah, this is all with the darkest brown first. And we're just leaving. So naturally, we can't see it right now because it's a silhouette, right? But naturally, his you see his one knee here. He's going to have another knee right there. So we're just going to put some little flicks in here to accentuate that that's going to be another knee coming in. So you'll see that there. Closer there. And we're just going to do that knee like that, kind of up a little bit. And then we're going to do the other knee as well. But we're leaving that space in between with that cream so we can differentiate where those knees are. And then you can just go down the front of each leg with the darker color. And just little flicks. And we're going to come in here too. Naturally, he would have his shoulder up in here. And we're just going to put little flicks there too, just to accentuate where that shoulder is coming in at. 
and we're going to go down the front of that leg. So anywhere where body parts are meeting, because this is a silhouette we did, so we didn't put the legs in, we have to do that. Um, so we're just going to put that in with the dark there. So that's where the shoulder is. And we're gonna do that here too on this front part of this leg. And then we can bring some down underneath in the belly. And I'm gonna make a little center of his, his ear here. So just a tiny little center. Is going to be darker and I'm just going to make around his nose and up his face a tiny bit darker here. So right now we're basically just kind of outline, <clears throat> excuse me, outlining with that dark brown. <coughs> excuse me. Too much talking tonight, not enough drinking. Yeah, so we're using the darkest brown right now. This is the brown we mixed with black. And all I'm doing is little tiny flicks just around his body. So just kind of outlining his body and then just where his body parts meet up. So his knee is there, his one knee is there, a little under his belly. And then where his shoulder is, down his leg, his chest, just up into his face a little bit, the center of his ear. And then we can throw a few randoms. We want to leave the front, the front, most of the front here is going to be a lighter color because that's where his light chest comes in. But we can throw a, just a flick here and there of the dark, just throughout his body, just here and there. We can even outline his little ear a little bit too with little flicks. So then we're gonna come in with that lighter brown. So just the brown that came right out of the bottle. And we're gonna throw some little flicks into his back here. We're just in between. It's okay if that beige is still showing through a bit. That's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna come right down his leg here. And you can throw a couple of these little flicks right into the dark too. Um, we don't want it to look like it's 100% separated, but just enough where we know that it differs in color a bit. And we'll follow that pattern down on the other knee and down the leg. So all the spaces kind of that we left beige, we're just gonna throw some flick, flicks of brown in, but we're just gonna leave his chest for now. And then we can bring a little bit into his face here.
We just want to leave a little space for his eye. So I'm going to move this a bit closer so you can see what's going on right now. But right now we just have that going on. Just a little space for his eye. His chest is a bit lighter still right now. And we're going to be going back and forth between colors. So right now we're just laying a base down for where the colors are going to be. So right now, that's what my deer looks like. Where are we? I can't figure this thing out. It's usually uh, the opposite way for me. So see that little eye hole space that we have there? That's what should be left. And then you can see the chest is a bit lighter right now, although we're going to go over that a bit more just because it looks like a hole. But right now, we just got a good base of the outline of where his legs are, his belly is, um, his whole body is kind of outlined a bit with that darker. Then we went in the center with that little bit of a lighter brown and just kind of filled in the empty spaces. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to dunk. I'm going to clean my brush off my little brush and I'm going to do a little bit of black on the end of it. And we're just going to make his eye this way. We can keep going with the fur. So it's just going to be a little almond shaped eye. And it's just going to go up and down like a little almond. Just like that. Just in the center there. I don't know if you can see that or if there's a glare. We're just going to put a little eyeball in the middle of there. And then we're going to take that black while we have it. And we're just going to put the bottom of his hoofs black. So we can paint those right now while we have our black out. And I'm just going to outline the ear a bit with this black, and I'm going to give him a little black nose on the end. And I'm just dividing those antlers a tiny bit with just a little line of black in here. Nothing too fancy. I will hold this closer so you can see. So we just did his little almond shaped eye and then we painted his hoofs black. And then I just outlined his ear and a little bit just in the antlers, gave him a little nose there. Yes, when you're done your paintings, if you want to share them, I always put up a video of everybody's paintings after. So um, I make kind of like a cute little, um, like a train video of them just right after one another. So you can share them um, right under here in the comments if you want when the video is done. You can put them right on my Facebook page if you would like to do that. You can send them to me in a message. Um, I also have a group called Create to Create 
with Artisticris, which is where we share all our paintings. If you wanted to join that group, I will put it at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm just gonna tag it here in the comments. So if you click on, you'll see I just put up created to create with Artisticris. I'm gonna pin it. Um, if you click right on that, then you can join the group. We have about, I think there's 337 people in there right now. So you can share them in there. People um, can see them. And then we also, it's a nice group for any paintings you do with anybody else. You can put them in there. If you need advice on a painting or want just, you know, what do I need to add to this painting to make it look better? Or the people in there are great for giving their opinions. So and it's, it's a very judgment-free zone. Okay, so we're gonna keep going here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white on that brush, same brush, and I'm just gonna paint the space. I'm just gonna do little flicks between the space between his fur and his hoof, just because that's always white there on a deer, so. Or any deer I've seen, I don't know if it's on every deer, but in my imagination, it's on. <laughs> And I'm just going to bring a little bit of that white right into his chest here with just a few little flicks down his chest. And then we're going to go and just put just little flecks here and there around that white, just kind of filling in that space, alternating back and forth between those two browns. So any spots that you missed or that you feel need to be a little bit lower down, like on I, on his hoofs here, I need to put a little bit of fur down lower. Just kind of, you know, work with it a bit. And I always like to put a little above and below his eye, just a little line to accentuate his eye just above and below. So you'll see here the dark. I just have a little bit above and below that um, original pupil there, but leaving a little bit of that cream in between just so it kind of pops out. Just to accentuate that almond shape. And just kind of flick here and there until you feel like all his fur is kind of covered in and it looks good. Yeah, I just put the white at his feet, like right above here, just where his, above his hoofs, and then just in between his hoofs and where his hair was, or his fur, just the white there, and then a little bit on his chest. And then I'm going to take one little tiny dot and put it right on his pupil there, just so that there's like a reflection there. It's very tiny, though. Um, yes, Christine, this will be on in about five minutes when we're done. I'm going to repost it. Okay, so then um, once your deer's all done, really the only thing we have left to do is just put the snow in there. So I like to just take one of my bigger brushes here and I just use the end of it. And then I'm just going to dunk it in the white. And then just do little dots here and there. And as I go, they'll get a little bit smaller, and that's okay because we get the different size snowflakes then. And the closer we are to the light, I like to put a few extra ones just because in the light you can always see the snow a lot better.
And then don't forget if you have that, if you did it with chalk and you have some chalk lines, just wait till tomorrow when it's dry and you can um, just take like a damp cloth and just kind of wipe it and all that chalk will come off. You can even do a couple little snowflakes right on the pool, just like it's falling in front. Kind of looks a little bit more realistic. And then I'm just gonna take at the bottom and I'm just gonna sign my initials. So don't forget to do that and be proud of what you accomplished tonight. You did something for yourself, which is hard to fit in these days, and it's so important. So I'm just going to back that up there. And I think we're complete. I think that completes everything. Oh, you know what? I did forget one little thing. I just realized. We can take and put this, you don't have to, but we can take and put just on the tops of our little wreaths here. I just put a little bit of snow with that small brush, just a little bit on top, just to look like it's kind of collecting there. I just dotted a couple little dots on the top there. And that's it. So you'll see just on the very tops of the garland going around, I just put a little bit of snow. But yeah, that's, that completes it. So I hope everybody had fun. And like I said, if it's, I, I put it in the comments, if you want to join that, my free group, feel free. And that's where we share all our paintings. Um, if not, you can just put the picture down in the comments or message me the, um, message me the picture and I will make a nice little video with everybody's <laughs> finished projects. But thank you so much for joining me. Um, don't forget on Sunday, if you want to bring your kids back. Um, me and my daughter will be painting that reindeer. And there is a link to my next paid event, um, which is next Friday for that church, if you want to do that. So everybody have the a rest of an amazing weekend. And um, that's really it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I had fun. Bye, everybody. Oh, um, if you want a tip, there is a um, Kath, Kathy just asked if we want to leave a tip. If you want to leave a tip in the event, there is a, li a square link um which is for a credit card if you don't want to do that you can just pm me and i'll give you my paypal um my email for paypal or e-transfer thank you so much guys have a great night